Hi there, this is Craig from Ottawa Swordplay, and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, weapons and grip transition. And uh, I've got one of our training spears here right now that I'm going to start with, and uh, I want to talk about that and compare it to some of the other weapons that we use. So, the information that we have from various sources, and at Ottawa Swordplay, we use mainly the armored combat sources for spear that are appended to uh, Lifted Hours. Uh, Zettel and Gloss in most of the manuscripts, but we also use Gladiatoria and we look at some of the other uh, German sources and of course I've looked at Fiori and Vladi and all those guys too. Um, but in the uh, southern German sources that we have, we tend to see in armored combat anyway a grip kind of like this where the um, right hand for a right-handed person is uh, near the butt of the spear but not all the way there and then the forward hand is like shoulder width or a little bit wider ahead of that. Um, Peter von Banzig's armored combat section specifically tells us as well that you can use, he doesn't say pool cue, but you can use the spear kind of like a pool cue and slide it through your lead hand and he talks about tucking the spear butt into your armpit once you've lodged the point in the other person and stuff like that. Um, but the grip uh, tends to be here and we do not see any indication that I'm aware of of switching to a grip like this in the same position on the other side. Uh, we do see the spear switch to the other side not very often and mostly in our secondary sources. So why? Why is that that we seem to see the spear on one side? Well, one of the things is that it is a unified system. The spear and the sword work kind of the same way, uh, or at least that's my very strong belief. So one of the things that we do see in our spear sources from time to time is that they bring their forward hand back to here in a cross-handed grip, and then from here they can do a very strong strike with the spear. Um, but this looks like the longsword in an ox guard with a strike from ox. Uh, so, since our sources for spear are mostly armored combat, what we're seeing is the equivalent of half sorting or the armored hand when we look at this spear grip. And this is our fighting with the spear long, the way that we would fight with the sword long against an unarmored opponent. That isn't to say that this can't be done uh, against armor. You can, but again, it gives us less ability to do certain things, um, particularly using the spear as a lever for a neck hook takedown or uh, things like that. And it also brings us further away and makes our aim a little bit trickier where here I'm getting in close. It's much easier to get into the openings in the armor. I suspect that if we had some earlier sources for spear uh, related to our system, they would include a lot more stuff like this. Now we do see some other interesting things in Gladiatoria specifically for spear that uh, I'm going to mention. Uh, one is that we see this stance here, uh, which is used while well, you've got your shield in your other hand when waiting, waiting to receive a thrown spear. And from here, I'm supposed to uh, flip the butt end of the spear up, and you can see that if a thrown spear is coming in at me, I can pick it up from there and throw my spear in a single motion, which is kind of a cool thing. We also have the um, reverse spear like this, where when an attack comes in, we can clear anything that comes through and come underneath uh, and stab in with the spear point like that. One of my absolute favorite little tricks with the spear. Um, but I really believe that as much as I'm sitting here sliding my hands all over the spear and moving it like this, that one of the principles that they don't tell us that they were working with is that you only move one hand at a time and you don't actually necessarily slide around very much. So we have this pool cue kind of thing, but if I'm doing a spear transition, I keep one hand firmly where it is and move my other hand to the same place. And we do exactly the same thing with other weapons. So I'm gonna get my sword. Sorry, this is my armor combat sword. I should have brought it closer to hand. Uh, but I can hold it in this grip. I can flip to the half-sorting guard 
and uh, again, it makes it easier to aim for small openings and wrestle. And then uh, I can strike with the pommel here, but we also see the march lag where we strike with the pommel specifically. And for that, I am going to let go with this hand and shift it to here, but this hand is going to stay planted where it is. And I believe that, especially in armor, any time that you're doing complicated actions, shifting things in your hands, you're going to risk dropping your weapon, which we don't want to do by accident. There's lots of reasons to drop your weapon on purpose, but we want to make that choice, not have it made by our own clumsiness. Now, the weapon that unifies the sword and the spear is, of course, the pole axe. Uh, so I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And um, we don't have a lot of clear information from the Southern German sources for pole axe. Uh, we see bits and pieces in Talhofer, Paulus Tal, and uh, Peter Falkner gives us a fair amount, and he connects it very much to quarterstaff. And again, I see this as the system works very much the same way. And we see with the pole axe this uh, hands towards each other grip quite frequently, which again matches my spear grip almost exactly. And one of the things is it still allows us when striking with the head to transition to a forward forehand grip, which is the same thing that we would do when doing uh, March lag. We also see in Talhofer that sometimes he's got the pole axe longer behind him and a longer grip. And again, I think that's a simple switching one hand to the other rather than sliding our hands around to move into, um, into a new position. So that's all I'm going to say about grip transitions uh, for the time being. I really strongly feel that they all go together and that it is a good idea to keep one hand firmly gripping the weapon that you don't want to let go of when you're trying to switch how you're holding it and really only move one hand at a time, no matter what you're doing, because it's too easy to let go, as I just almost did as an intentional demonstration of my point. All right, thank you very much. I hope this was fun.